My name is Marcel and I would like to share with you how I made my electronic drum kit and how you could be making your own electronic drum kit. This is part 5 of a 10 part series and in this video I would like to show you how I made my foot pads. Foot pads are basically drum pads that fit in a bass drum pedal so you can play them with your feet. This is the foot pad that I played today. As you can see I use 4 of them. Which sounds I play with each of them depends on the music I play. When I play pop or rock music, this pedal on the right side is mainly used for a kick sound. This one on the other side is usually an open higher sound. And the others differ quite a lot. In this video I would like to show you a few old models and after that I will show you my current model. Let's go to the workbench. I started in the late 80s. Back then, most bass drum pedals were placed vertical. They looked like ordinary pads with two pipes to keep it standing up. I felt it would be easier and cheaper to make a pad that would be used horizontal. So in order to make good contact, I made my own beater and rod. It looked like this. Okay, it worked fine, but it looked a bit silly. After that, I made several new foot pads using PVC and steel profiles in angles of 90 degrees. That worked fine as well, but that required to bend the rod for the player to make a good contact with the foot pad. That worked fine for me personally, but I did not feel that was a good idea to sell to customers. In the late 90s, I made an oval shaped foot pad and that is what I still use today. It consists of two metal parts that I had powder coated in black. The lower part is bent in 47 degrees, which fits most bass drum pedals. If you look at it closely, the design is pretty much the same as the drum pad I showed you in. From top to bottom you see a piece of rubber as a playing surface, a top plate, a foam layer and a bottom part for mounting. The trigger obviously goes beneath the top plate. The main differences are that the shape and material of the plate and bottom parts are different. Also, I make these parts out of metal instead of plastic because it needs to withstand much more forces compared to pads being played with a drumstick. Unfortunately, I do not have enough parts to construct a new one today. But here I have a foot pad of which the foam is damaged, so I want to replace it. Let's tear it open. Now, if you have seen parts 2 and 4 of this series, there are no surprises. You can clearly see the piezo attached underneath the plate. You can see that the cable is attached to the piezo at one side and to the connector on the other side. Because the design is practically the same as a drum pad, I don't think I need to go into details on what parts and what tools you need. Aside from the obvious difference in material and size, there is also a difference in the order in which it is assembled. Although the cable could go around the bottom part, I prefer to have the cable go through a hole in the bottom part. That means I need to put the cable through before I solder the trigger. So this footbed now needs a new foam layer. I do not need to disassemble the whole thing. Here I have a piece of foam prepared. What I need to do is I need to cut the foam in the middle. Then I can wrap it around the top plate like this. So what remains now is that I need to glue it together. For that I use stick glue like I have shown you in the previous video. So this footpad is not broken. This is an example of maintenance. When you make pads yourself, chances are that you need to do some maintenance now and then. Now to mount the footpad in your bass drum pedal, you might need a few pieces of rubber. Depending on the position of the beater, when it makes contact, you might want to add these pieces above or below. The most important thing, you need to make sure that the beater is pressing the surface exactly in the middle. If it isn't aligned, it will not press evenly. In a few months time, the foam will tear, just like it did in the footbed you just saw. So, make sure it is aligned in both directions. 
Also, you need to set the angle of the beater and rod. In my experience, the rod should be about horizontal when no pressure is applied. Don't go bending the rod now. Most pedals nowadays can be adjusted down by the axis easily. This reminds me that I need to give you two tips for when you're going to buy a new bass drum pedal. First, you need to check whether the angle of the beater and rod can be adjusted like with this pedal. Second, I recommend a pedal with a plate underneath. Most pedals will do, but check these two things before you buy a new pedal. Just like in the previous videos about cymbals and pads, I'd like to show you some other designs just to trigger your imagination. Remember the first footpad I showed you in this video? That looked pretty easy, didn't it? I have an even simpler design here. This consists of two small plates of PVC and some foam in between. In fact, it is pretty much one zone of the multipad I have shown you in the previous video. As always, the piezo is beneath the top plate. There is a downside, however, compared to a footpad that you play with a bass drum pedal, it's more difficult to play fast patterns. Try it and you'll find out what I mean. If you want to play electronic drums, you need to have a hi-hat. In electronic drum kits, the hi-hat is a somewhat complicated component. All components of drum kit function individually. The hi-hat is a combination of two components. In electronic drum kit, the common practice is to use a common drum pad plus a foot fitch or pedal to be played with your foot. What is appropriate depends on the drum module. On your drum module, there usually is one input that has the label hi-hat. Most models also have an input for either a foot switch or a pedal. That input may be called hi-hat control. They work together, which means that the sound you will hear when you play the pad depends on whether the foot switch or pedal is pressed or not. You should hear a closed hi-hat sound when the foot switch is pressed and an open hi-hat sound when it's not pressed. Also, when you press the foot switch without hitting the pad, you should hear a third sound, a closing sound. Some modules even have a fourth sound if you press and release the pedal quickly. With most drum modules, you can use a foot switch to open and close the hi-hat. Here you see an example of a foot switch that I have used often. I have often used double-sided tape to attach the foot switch on a floor. You could also use Velcro if you have a carpet underneath. If you need to buy a foot switch, don't buy an on-off switch, but a momentary foot switch. If you want to be creative, you could make a foot switch yourself. What you need is a small electronic switch like this one and mount it beneath a bass drum pedal, like in this picture. The advantage is that a kick pedal is much tougher than the average foot switch you can buy. For those that are looking very closely at this picture, I have a dog that has blonde hairs. So those are not mine, in case you noticed. Uh, well, now you have noticed, I guess. Also, you could combine the switch with a footpad. With two pedals and two footpads and one switch, you have three functions for two feet. Using multiple setups on your drum module, you could alternate functions. When using a foot switch, the hi-hat can either be open or closed. If you own a module that works with a special hi-hat pedal, connecting such a pedal might offer you more in-between sounds. If you really want a realistic hi-hat, check the features of several drum modules before you buy one. A well-known example of a hi-hat pedal is the Roland FD7. Basically, it has a pressure sensor on the inside that can measure how far down you have pushed the pedal. Great design in theory, whether you like this pedal or not, that is personal. I have been playing LSS modulus for over 20 years. Since drum modules like the D4 only work with foot switches, I haven't played with this pedal at all. Instead, I developed another way of playing hi-hat sounds. I use multiple pads. I have one or two drum pads for the close hi-hat sounds, a foot pad for the open hi-hat sound, and another pad for a half-open hi-hat sound. I will show you how I play hi-hat sounds in a separate video that I plan to make in the future. That's it for part 5. 
In this video I showed you how I made my footpads. By now I have shown you how to make triggers, symbols, pads and footpads. But you will also need to build a rack to mount all these things on. That is the topic of the next video. I hope you stay tuned.